Welcome back to the channel, folks. I'm your host, Fog. Thank you for joining another episode here on Battle Gamers. And today, we're going to mess around with this thing a little bit more. This is the At Games Legends Pinball. We're kind of coming to the end of what I want to do with the machine. Essentially, we've gotten the Vibs board put in, so you'll find all the links below for other videos that we've done on this. But we've gotten the Vibs board put in so we can mess around with the back glass and hook it to a PC. We've gotten the button in place so we can switch back and forth from the front of the machine. We've went in and messed around with the control panel, the arcade control panel that's on there as well. So you can actually go in and play shooters or whatever you want using the control panel built into the machine. And I've also put an, an actual Alienware Alpha R2 and graphics amplifier into this so we actually can run other machines and control multiple screens that is the big thing with obviously that vibs board integration but we have the full play field and then we also have the back glass but i want to do one more thing and and i've teased it a little bit and i'm going to show it to you here in a minute but i want to add a dmd to this a dedicated one so we can go through and actually play you know pinball machines the way they were meant to like with a back glass to kind of show the artwork a dmd at the bottom of that and then the full play field and this machine i want to do it keep it as stock as possible make it look as stock as possible you know i'm not trying to to change the way it looks or make a bigger back glass we want to fit something in there and we want to inset it into the device we want to make sure it's flush with the uh, back glass plexiglass and, and just make it look unique and, and kind of a really nice install. So that's what we're going to attempt to do. Plus we're going to do a couple other things, right? We want to add some more airflow for that Alienware Alpha. Although it's been performing fine, I definitely want to do that. And I want to come up with a way to get rid of the cables plugging in for the OTG PC into the top of the machine. We're going to do that and we're going to do it here in this video so this video actually i'm waiting on a couple pieces to come in but i wanted to start filming it may look like uh i'm changing shirts and that's the reason why is because it's probably going to happen on a couple days but it will all be condensed into one video here and it should be pretty short we're going to talk about the disassembly of the machine uh you know, or at least go through it i don't think we have to talk about it anymore but we're going to go through and, and kind of do some uh, fast forwarding through some of that so you can actually see what it takes to get the pieces off. The back glass is going to be the most interesting because that is either glued or double sided tape or something like that that's holding it to the actual cabinet or the, the back glass cabinet or the, the wood part. So we're going to have to figure out how to do that without breaking that plexi and then we're going to have to start cutting the plexi and we've got to wait for the cutting blade to come in for plexiglass which I've been waiting on so that's going to take a day or so hopefully to get here and then we'll be able to get that done and, and cut out a nice piece but before we do that I will show you an alternative way to mount this specific screen that I found and um, it may work for some people it's almost like you're getting so far in you might as well go through and clear out all the problems but ultimately we'll get this thing up and running and make it look really nice so folks I want you to stay tuned appreciate it keep watching here and we're going to get through this and hopefully we're going to have something cool on the other end so check it out okay the first thing we're going to need to do for this back glass to get the plexi off is take care of the four phillips screws on each of the speaker grills and then the two at the top that'll at least get us halfway in there and we'll be able to then force that plexiglass off of the frame itself Now, the next thing we're gonna to have to do is get into the back glass itself. You get that little key with it to kind of make it feel more, more official. And then we see the Vibs board installation in there. Now, the Vibs board is going to have to be moved. Ultimately, what we're gonna to try to do here is move the Vibs. We're going to be cutting a hole in this piece right here, missing hopefully missing the actual LCD of the back glass panel and be able to cut that in so we can mount this uh, DMD flush. So we're going to have to remove this. This is pretty simple. Everything's been unplugged, obviously. That'd be the first thing you'd do. And then you just kind of reverse your, your work that you did to put the Vibs board in if you do have it. 
So now, ultimately, what we need to do is start pushing here, giving it some force to be able to get that glue or that tape released. And you can feel it if you ever, if you just start to put a little bit of force on the corner here, you can feel it come loose. Now, this is where the warning comes in. If you're not willing to do this and break something, I wouldn't do it. This is not an, a way, this is not an information kind of thing of how to do exa everything exactly correct. This is more along the lines of like, I'm trying to figure it out. I could break my machine. I'm willing to take that risk. That would be my warning for you. So from that point forward, we're gonna start pressing and getting this off of here. And then I'll, I'll actually spin the game, uh, the cabinet around so we can take a look at it from the front. Okay, here we go. As I said, I've got this corner loose here, so I'm gonna put equal pressure on both sides. I'm not gonna push at any point where I'm gonna be bending the board. You can hear the tape release. I think that's what it is, it's tape. It's glue or tape. I haven't figured that out yet, but we gotta take it slow. There we go. Let's come along, we're gonna try to do it evenly if we can. There's a little bit here in the center that makes it tougher. It's probably where the, the actual screen is connected. You can hear that coming off. Yep. Pretty strong tape. It is tape. I can see it now. Gradual pressure across. Not flexing this more than it can take. Don't bend it. That would be my guess. And the problem is here when we do release this is that exposes the screen to dust. So before we get it all the way off, I am going to go get some plus, um what would you call it, uh, plastic wrap, and put that over top of the screen to hopefully help keep some of the dust off. I'm not sure if that'll work. That's just a guess again. <laughs> We're going to try anything here once. Okay, we've almost got the screen released, so I'm going to go grab that. I'll be right back. Okay, we got our plastic wrap, so I'm going to fast forward through this, and then you'll see me put that on here at the end. There it is. So this has got a lot of that tape on here that we're probably going to have to replace um, to be able to get kind of the same hold again. But ultimately, this is the area we're gonna be working with right here. And this is a fairly, um, fairly decent sized piece of plexiglass but ultimately plexiglass is plexiglass so we may mark it up we may have some scratches on it things like that but we'll try to protect it as much as possible and and not damage it in any way crack it do anything like that so we're going to use the right tools but that's getting the piece off let's uh, get to the rest of it and quickly just to look at the back box and how close this is going to be when we put this in here and get it mounted i figure that the back glass will actually sit on this unit. That's, that's as best as I can do. There is this piece right here that I'm a little concerned with because I feel a wire going through and I believe that's the, if I'm not mistaken, that's the flex cable. So we're gonna have to route that around it a little bit. It's going to be a little tight, but I believe this unit will be able to fit right in there, have the screen kind of rest on it a little bit. It'll still rest on the corners here. And then ultimately that'll close over top of it and it'll be nice and flush. You know, all, all things considered, hopefully. And then the cables will route behind here. We'll cut out an area for the cables to come out and it'll be nice and you won't even see it. So that's, that's the, uh, the target we're aiming for. Now we also want to take a look at a couple of things underneath here since we got that back glass cabinet off. Uh, I'm going to take the side rails off and the lock bar, and we're gonna take a look at how to get these connections, the HDMI and the USBs off, as well as we gotta drill those holes in the bottom to be able to get some more airflow. So you don't visually see it, you know, it won't be visible, but 
it'll actually give it a little bit more airflow. And then I think at that point, we're pretty much going to leave this alone, maybe reroute some of the cables, some of the wires, things like that, just to clean it up. But otherwise, I think this won't take too long. The real project is the cabinet. So we'll, we'll fast forward through tearing all of this down. So essentially we've been able to get the actual control deck, the HDMI, USB control button and volume out of the machine. There's four screws that you can move the screen down just a little bit to be able to get access to. I'll show those when we're either in the, the uh, disassembly or when we're putting it back in. And ultimately, you know, we're in a point here we're getting to, to where there's a no return policy kind of thing. <laughs> And if you don't want to go any further with this, make sure to stop here because you're obviously going to be modifying things and it may not go back the way it came from the factory. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing that I would suggest is when you do have your glass top removed from the screen of the main play field, make sure to replace that while you're working on these components. The reason being is you could have dust get in there a random object fall on that screen or a you know nameless cat that we we won't talk about jump on there so we don't want anything to happen to that so take precautions as you're tearing this apart and um, make the smart move so let's take a look at this unit we're going to get into here this is this is the meat this is where we want to get to so hang tight and we'll do a quick assembly disassembly and then jump in and see what we can fix so the way to get that board out is just to take your screwdriver in the little fastener holes and just kind of work it out on each side as you go and eventually it'll slide out. There's nothing holding it in there. It's just, uh, what would you call that? Um, uh, pressure or I forget how you'd, you'd say that. It's, um, yeah, it's like pressured in there in between two pegs so it just you got to work it out so now we've got the board out so at this point we're we're good we just take this if we really wanted to only work with this part we could just route this back underneath of the cabinet and there's nothing else you have to do like we could you know protect it or whatever but we could put this right back in or we could keep it in that and just fill all of these holes up right there which you can buy little rubber pieces to probably fill these two for USBs and HDMI. That one you might have to, the channel, you might have to come up with an idea for that. And then the light, you know, obviously you're not gonna see when it's on the lights, but you kind of see that on the table. The good thing is the volume control is separate. So we didn't even have to mess with that. We can put that back in, that works just fine. But I'm curious if, there's a way for us to maintain a portion of this, which would be the lights and the switcher. But the way the board looks is that there's not. There are actually components that go into both of these. Like this is not cleanly just for the HDMI and the USBs, and then this is just for the switcher and the, uh, the lights. So we may not be able to do that. But ultimately we've gotten the thing that we need to do out of this, which is you know, be able to put this underneath. The switching of the back glass uh, is a totally separate unit. It doesn't have anything to do with this piece. And to be able to flip the, the play field into OTG mode, you can do that from the actual menu system. You don't have to do it from the switcher here. So. We'll take a look at this further and see if there's anything else we can do. So ultimately I put this back together. I'm gonna to keep the unit all in one here with the lights and the, the selector switch on. 
and this will be underneath you know under the cabinet we're going to put this back on and we'll get the plugs basically we're just going to go buy some rubber laptop plugs and then we'll figure out a solution for this and you know if i really want to down the road i can just take some wires solder some lights or desolder these lights from the board solder some wires to it and run them up to here so you could see that again this is not this right here sorry it's out of frame is not required to actually be able to get into otg you can do that from the menu so i might just plug these up and and call it good there i mean it's again i'm not doing anything that cannot be undone here so we could always just kind of pull this apart slide it in again and then put it back to to, to stock all right, folks, now we've got the back box off. We've relocated one of the speakers to make way for where we're going to have to cut. And then if we flip this over, hopefully that speaker holds. I just moved it so it wouldn't cut the wires. I mean, it's just a speaker wire. You could just solder it back on. It's not hard, but why, why ruin it? We've got the perfect spot now with the screen removed. So with removing the screen, there's this little kind of felt, I don't even know what this is, like a foam, rubberish foam material that closes up this hole. I just ripped it off because I'm gonna cut it out anyhow. And then at that point I could get my fingers underneath of it and there's some double-sided tape on the back of that screen, but you just slowly pull it up and it just releases. And then the screen's just moved off here to the side. With, uh, I still have that cellophane on it just to kind of keep as much dust off as possible. But yeah, you can just see it's some double-sided tape, so that'll be good to replace that with. Then at that point, I've used my pattern that I made off of my new screen and dropped it in. I think it was uh, this way. And essentially how it's gonna fit, we're gonna have to take all the way up and that screen, the main screen, the back glass screen, will sit on top of that screen. So essentially it'll look, this will be cut down and that screen will sit right on top of that one and then it'll be inset and it'll, you know, we'll mount it at the same depth so that everything looks uniform and that's, that's going to be it. So the next step is going to be the Dremel. Because we're working so slow or so close to the edge here, I'm going to use a Dremel and I'm going to cut on the pro side, which I've always heard, which is, you know, more towards the opposite end you're going to toss away and then we can file it down. So we can get it as square as we need. But the big issue, this is not the issue at all for me. The big issue is going to be obviously the plexiglass. So let's go out and check this out and we'll cut this. Okay, folks, here's the true test to see if it's actually going to work. We've got the entire unit put together again. Well, not entirely. Still have to cut the plexiglass. That's a totally different thing. But got everything cut out. The new 8-inch touchscreen is in there. The normal back glass is in there. It's all put back together with the Vibs board and everything. And the play field. So let's turn it on and see what happens. This was a little precarious. This is super tight in here. Again, it sits on top of that, but unfortunately the ribbon cable that connects into there is sitting and now has force on it. That's slight force, right? Like it is what I would say, <laughs> don't do this. Number one, if you are to do this, you're, you don't have a lot of room to play with. There's maybe a quarter inch here that I had to keep. And I probably wouldn't uh, go anything higher than that. Maybe even if you could shave that down to maybe an eighth or something like that. But then you're really going to have a tough time with that plexiglass. So it's, it's like 
right in the middle of almost, you know, no, no mistake kind of level in terms of that area that you're working with. And if at games hadn't put a brass connector on that ribbon cable that goes into the LCD panel for the back glass, it would for sure have broke if it was plastic with, with that tiny amount of pressure getting that in there. I saw it um, disconnected or you could feel it. So I went in, kind of tore the tape off and everything. So let's check it out, see what happens and see if it works. It should have power. Nope. Something's happening. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, thank God. There we go. So yeah, that I was worried about that little connector right at the bottom of that screen. I didn't know if that was because when I could see that the cable was a little shifted, I thought, you know what? It may have done something, but uh, fortunately it looks like it's okay. There we go. So now we should have everything, speakers hooked up. If we go in and grab uh, just any table, we should get the back glass. I still haven't turned this on. We will turn that on here in a second. It should work just fine. Although again, the, the fit and everything, it is kind of, it has some force on the connectors for the mini, I think it's a mini HDMI and the USB-C power. So we should get sound here. There we go. And we still have, you know, obviously we didn't mess with the controls too much, but we did have the panel off. So everything works there. We're getting some vibration now on this. I don't know what that is. I reseated it. So I'm gonna have to check this, but the control panel has just a little bit of vibration. If you just put your finger down on it, it stops, like just lay it there. So we're done with this. We know that this is working now. Let's get the back glass turned on and see if everything's good there. And like I said, we can go in here and just go to the menu to do the HDMI pinball setting. But I was thinking about it <laughs> and the problem is there's no way to get back. Without the button being up here, there's no way to get back. And you can see, you know, we've relocated everything. So there's no OTG PC connections on the top. So what I'm going to do is run another button like on the Vibs board underneath here to be able to flip the channel. Um, so it's either you know normal mode or OTG mode. And then I'm also gonna put one more plunger or button under here for turning, it, turning the PC on and off, which will control this screen as well. So let's go ahead and turn that on and see how it looks together. So we got that. Let's go ahead and flip this over. So there's our Windows logo, so that's good. We can put the PC into OTG and hit our button under here. And we should have our back glass. So there they are, all three. So now, if we go in, and let's see here. Let's put it into uh, big picture mode. There we go. So now we can, you know, basically run Steam with this easily. And let's try Pinball FX3. Back glass. And then we'll just check the DMD works because it's, it's basically just set up right at that point. Nothing more than that. Uh, we'll do no. Oh yeah, we should have done that. <laughs> Let's choose um, paranormal. paranormal. So back glass looks great. And there it is. There is the full 
experience that I wanted. So, eight inch touch panel as your DMD back glass, running your backboard and all that, or whatever they want to call that. And then, um, you know, control panel and all that still works. No problems. Yeah, that's what I wanted. So, next on the list is the well, let's just say this. I have not hit the point of no return yet. If I don't want to worry about this, I can leave that back glass covered up and just put the plexiglass back on and you would never know the difference. But we want to finish this. So the next thing to do is to cut out this area here in the plexiglass so we have the full uh, experience with everything back on. It looks as factory as it can, right? Like that's the, the biggest thing. I know it won't be factory and I know it won't probably look exactly as a factory would do it, but I would love to get it as close as possible. So we may end up having that in a separate video. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to fit it in yet or not. So if I don't, I'm going to end the video here and I want to thank everybody for watching so far. Hopefully we get everything done. It's taken me a, like a couple days because I sit there and talk to myself and say, don't do this, don't do this, you're going to ruin it, you're going to screw it up, but you know, keep going with it. And then I work up the courage and I go out and do some things and, and it goes together and you know, it looks good. So I think the final video will be all the parts that I bought will be the cutting of the back glass and, and finally putting it on as long as it doesn't break or shatter. And at that point, we'll, we'll talk about was it worth it to me or whatever. So final thoughts, but I want to thank everybody for watching so far into this series and I would love to have you come back. So if you haven't, give us a, a subscribe. If you like the video, definitely give us a like. If you dislike it and think it was stupid, dislike that, thumbs down or whatever. And if you have any experience doing this or have any critiques, I'm fine with that. So, you know, go ahead and drop that in the comments. Love to read everybody's thoughts on it. And obviously, if there's a better way to do it, because this was not necessarily a tutorial, it was just like, here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do, and here's what I did. Uh, you know, it's only going to help if the community's talking about it, at least in general sense of spreading good ideas around. I know that uh, Cool Toys built a whole new backboard for his. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to try to keep everything stock, but um, his looked great with like the Simpsons or whatever theme and different monitors and all that. So. Lots of different ideas. Love to see what everybody thinks. Drop it in the comments and we'll talk next time. Thank you folks. Bye-bye.